Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, FAI World Yak 52 Aerobatic Championships coming up. Second flight of Facebook's Aquila drone a success. Aviation aircraft developing all electric commuter plane. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's July 5th and this is Airborne Unlimited. Our good friends at the International Aerobatic Club tell us that an American team is preparing to participate in the 5th FAI World Yak 52 Aerobatic Championships in Tula, Russia for the first time. The historic military airfield Klokovo in Tula, Russia will host the 5th FAI World Yak 52 Aerobatic Championships on July 9th through 16th, 2017. This year, pilots from 15 countries will participate in the international competition. Participants will compete in the aircraft supplied by the sponsoring club, Federation of the Aerobatic Sports of Tula Region. The American team consists of three IAC members and pilots from California, Marion Harris, Ross Ferguson, and Brian Brancombe. We are really excited to bring the first American team to this competition where the Normandy Neiman trained during the Second World War, said Ross Ferguson, USA team pilot. The eight-day competition will conclude with the dramatic air show, a parachute demonstration, model aircraft demonstrations, and a concert. Facebook has completed the second flight of its Aquila drone, which it hopes to use to provide internet connectivity to remote areas of the world and this time the aircraft landed safely. The one hour and 46 minute flight concluded with a smooth landing at the Yuma Proving Ground in Arizona. The company learned some lessons from the first flight, which ended with the drone being damaged when it impacted terrain. The Aquila was modified by adding spoilers to the wings, which helped to increase drag and reduce lift during the landing approach, incorporating hundreds of sensors to gather new data modifying the autopilot software, integrating new radios for the communication subsystem, applying a smoother finish on the plane, and installing a horizontal propeller stopping mechanism to support a successful landing. The flight included lengthy test points at constant speed, heading, and altitude to measure the airplane's drag. The aircraft structure was also heavily instrumented with hundreds of sensors to collect data about how Aquila shape responds to flight in real time. The aircraft landed autonomously on a 500-foot circle of level gravel. Aquila has no landing gear per se and instead lands on Kevlar pads glued to the bottom of the engine pods. After the break, a next-gen commuter plane gets help from 3D printing. The Bristel Light Sport aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. Aviation Aircraft is using Stratasys 3D printing to develop one of the world's first all-electric commuter aircraft. In the next four years, Aviation aims to make regional air travel a cost-effective and clean option that rivals any existing form of transit today, said Aviation founder and CEO Omer Barriohe. With people working and commuting across greater distances than ever before, we believe the solution will bring mid-range cities like Seoul and Beijing or London and Paris closer together through all-electric air travel. Our ability to create new iterations of designs with 3D printing and see how they perform in real time is helping us reduce critical capital cost, even as we accelerate our rapid prototyping phase, explains Barrio Hay. 
For example, Eviation 3D printed its wingtip motors in a matter of hours, enabling swifter design and functional evaluation, while waiting for the final motors to be shipped. Another key aspect of Eviation's design is its ability to reduce interference drag on the exterior of the aircraft by employing smooth, curved surfaces. Eviation was able to create the required strong, geometrically complex, lightweight parts to support these surfaces by 3D printing a composite layup tool, which was then covered with carbon fiber. With some 3,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. We've always done it this way. It's hard to get people to change it. Uh, but the Airman Certification Standards are designed to create a pilot who's risk aware. While at EAA AirVenture 2016, ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell heard a lot of talk about the new FAA Airman Certification Standards. He decided to go to a world-renowned and respected source on such issues and met up with John and Martha King, the co-owners of King Schools. Search Expert Analysis by the King's Airman Certification Standards 2016 on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, new parachutes coming to ACES 2 ejection seat. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit Plus Engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Members of the 418th Flight Test Squadron are testing a new parachute canopy for the Advanced Concept Ejection Seat 2. Testers are collecting data on the GR7000 parachute, which has been proposed to replace the current C9 canopy used in the ACES-2 ejection seat. This testing is part of the Air Force's ACES-2 Safety and Sustainability Improvement Program. The new UK Minister of Transport says the government is committed to aviation, citing the addition of a third runway at Heathrow as an example of that commitment. Lord Martin Callanan said that the nation's airspace is a piece of the national infrastructure as important as our roads and railways. We're a government that recognizes the vital importance of air travel to our country. Regularly scheduled airline flights operated by Valeris, an ultra-low fare Mexican airline, were supposed to begin from San Bernardino International Airport last week, but it looks like it could be months before the first flight start. A new $20.5 million international arrivals terminal was completed three years ago, and Valeris was set to begin service between San Bernardino and Guadalajara, Mexico. But they didn't count on a shortage of Customs and Border Protection officers, and it's not known when they'll be hired. A Chinese prototype solar-powered drone recently completed a 15-hour stratospheric flight, achieving an operating altitude of 65,616 feet, according to Chinese state media. The aircraft was built by the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, a subsidiary of China Academy of Aerospace Aerodynamics. It has been designated the Kaihang Solar UAV. Local media has called the aircraft the CHT-14. Online registration has been open for the International Skydiving Hall of Fame celebration event to be held September 21st through 23rd at Chicago Land Skydiving Center in Rochelle, Illinois. The annual weekend fundraiser of jumping, celebration, catching up with old friends, and making new ones and chatting with skydiving's legends has become the go-to event for the skydiving community, organizers say. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. 
As we have in years past, ANN is undertaking one of our readers' favorite programs, our Flyers Dozen, of the best sport planes and companies in the biz. The sport plane business has been through some rough times these last few years as a few companies let us down badly. Icon Aircraft, chief among them. And face it, it didn't help that the economy was not in the best shape and the struggle to enjoy aviation hasn't gotten any easier. We're putting together profiles of all the likely suspects and we want your input. Our Flyers Dozens list is initially assembled by experts with a true passion for sport aviation and boasts tremendous long-term expertise in the field. But we also appreciate and want your opinions because the ultimate arbiter of a truly successful sport plane is one that sport aviation community embraces for themselves. We would like to hear from you as to your experiences with the various sports planes, good and bad, so that we may include your info in our planning processes. You can reply to jim at aero-news.net. So you have a few days in which to think about the aircraft that you feel deserves such recognition and submit them to us so that we can together make a proper selection for 2017. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.